This is the original eSport racing game. This is iRacing. Today there are many fast drivers in the field, but a driver's pace may not be as important as his ability to conserve fuel. A long length of a lap means finding success will most likely hinge on who can go slow enough to finish without needing to stop for gas, but fast enough to stay near the front. But nothing is for certain, though it might be foolish, someone might just decide to race flat out build up a big enough lead to allow for a splash and dash on the way to the win. Uncertainty breeds intrigue, and intrigue breeds entertainment. So get ready to be entertained because the advanced Mazda Cup has come to the Nürburgring for round seven on its 2019 spring season championship. And you can see all the strength of field action live as it happens right here on the Global Sim Racing Channel via the iRacing Esports Network. Good well, talk, everyone, and welcome. Joe Peak joins yours truly, Bill Soupson, to bring you our word's eye view. John Crackers Ambrose has director duties armed with cameras locked and loaded by Dougie Beer. Our venue today is nicknamed the Green Hell, and if you ever find yourself in an Emerald Underworld, finding out you only need to do four laps there has got to be a way of looking on the bright side. Joe, you studied German in school. Here's a chance to make your teachers proud. Tell us a little bit about today's racetrack, The Ring. Well, it's the Nürburgring. Specifically, they're racing on just the Nordschleife. Just the raw stats are enough to make any person's jaw drop. 154 corners over nearly 13 miles of circuit. That means that half the challenge is simply memorizing the circuit, let alone being fast. Drivers literally dedicate their lives to this track in real life, with some of them becoming instructors or ring taxi drivers, as they're called. Basically, someone who takes a tourist in a passenger seat and wheels them around the track at a pace that any sane person would consider suicidal. Believe it or not, this is what Formula One used to hold the German Grand Prix at year after year before safety became too big of an issue to ignore. Today, the Nordschleife section is mostly used for tourist laps, the BLN series, and of course, the 24 hours at the ring. So it's actually pretty fitting for these MX-5s to be racing here. In fact, let's hop on board one to see a few of the highlights from the driver's perspective. All right, we've got Amjad Yama to the GSRC MX-5, so let's do a lap around the Nürburgring. The Nord Curve will have a tricky entry with the downhill causing some understeer. Drivers will really want to ensure they get the nose tucked into the apex. But we're going to jump ahead and look at the rest of the track since an entire lap would be too long to cover. High Oaks isn't too difficult in the MX-5, but the exit requires every ounce of momentum you can squeeze out of the car. You'll be flat out all the way through fluke plots until the Swedish Cross. You can stay on the gas through this fast sweeper, but the important thing is to line up your braking for Edinburgh. This is a good potential passing zone, but once again, square off your quarter exit to maximize your launch down into the foxhole, where speeds will get pretty high. Later on, we hit Outner Forest with its scary fast kinked entry. Continue to slow the car down as the track veers right, then swing the car wide and late apex the left-hander. Get on the power as soon as you dare, or else you'll leave yourself vulnerable to the run up to Metzgefeld. Further down the hill, we come to Miss Hit Miss. Follow the name for the apexes and you've got the correct line. Keep the car to the left and do your best to keep it stable under braking in a defense valley. It's easy to get over eager and plow the car into the arm code to the outside, so be wary of how deep you send it in. Jumping ahead, one of the most critical turns you'll come across is Bergwerk. You'll be flat to the floor climbing uphill for a long time, so make sure you come off the corner carrying your speed. Up at the top, you'll run into one of the most unique corners in all of racing, the carousel. It's banked, but that banked part is only one car wide. Hold the throttle steady around the bend and then floor it so that the car comes out just as the banking ends. 
Now let's look at Vipperman. It translates to Seesaw Man and it used to be much bumpier than this. It still retains its difficulty with the way you need to pound over these curbs. You get a short rest before the right-hander where you'll be lulled into thinking it can be taken faster than is possible. The crest sends the car very wide, so pay heed. Down into Ashbrook, this bend is best if taken as two apexes to help line yourself up on the left at the exit. That's because it immediately transitions into the right-hander which dumps you into Brunchen. Another distinct corner on the ring is Flans Garden, where the car gets a bit of air on entry. The uphill bend portion of this corner needs a little lift and a dab of the brakes, but you can mostly power through it. Then, there's the tricky swallowtail. Lift to slow it down through the right-hander and try your best to get the car settled. The track suddenly switches back into a crested left-hander that pays dividends if you can press your foot to the floor early. Coming up is the mini carousel, which is a shorter, faster version of its big brother. You can be a lot more aggressive in this one than the larger one. Drift the car back to the left and you've got the most critical turn of the circuit. Gallo Hill needs a small lift, but get to the gas quickly and be smooth with your inputs. Keeping your momentum up here is needed since it'll come back to haunt you for nearly a mile. As you exit the corner, you finally hit the needed rest of the Dardiner Hoa. At the end of this long straight is Tiergarten and then Huenran. Get to the brakes where the armco ends and then try to get it woed up for the right-hander. Hug tight to the curb on the left and then lightly hit the brakes for the oddly named turn 13. As you come off this final corner, you've now finished a lap around the Nürburgring. There you have it, a condensed lap around the Nordschleife. All right, let me give you a little look at the driver standings here. Keep in mind that these driver standings take into account two of the four drop races around four in the rules. You see those two highlighted drops up on top. So basically, it's the driver's best four of six results. Sonny Kenshin remains in the lead. He's got 101 points in his pocket. That's his biggest drop that he had to leave out of there. Mike Dan picks up a spot. Now, notice the zero by his drop. That means he has dropped two no-shows. Jonas Mumilidi sits in third position, down a spot. David Payton hangs on to his spot. And then there's Clifford Eben. Welcome to the top five as he comes up six positions. The bad news is he's away from home, so he's watching on his laptop. Not sure if he's going to race on his laptop or not. Don't expect him to be competitive today if he does. Joe, how about the race details? Well, we are in round seven out of 12. They're starting to run out of time if they want to take a shot at this championship. Only four laps today. Now, it says no pit stop, but that isn't for sure. If anybody is too tight on fuel, they might not make it to the line. They'll know with one lap to go, and they really shouldn't pass up the pits. Uh, the setups on the cars are open. The uh, incident cap is at 17, and they're using the official iRacing points. Well, let's go to the grid. We'll do that right now. Qualifying's already done. Jonas Mumalidis sits on the pole inside of Mike Dam. Robert Mason and Kota Miwa go third and fourth. The next row is Sara Dove. Good to see her racing with us again. Haven't seen her in a while. David Payton is going to be outside of her. Andrew Barry and Eric Crenshaw go in seventh and eighth. Ninth and tenth is the Sheriff, Jordy Fike, with Derek Holland flanking him. Then you've got Garrett uh, Griffin starting 11th, Rui Coimbra in P12, and Hikaru Suzuhimi in 13th. Gareth Brocklesby starts P14 with John Cannon in 15th, and Jeremy Hobson P16. Zachary Sears will be starting in the 17th position, Mark Letourneau in 18th, Michael Furchak in 19th, and Graham Sanders rounds out our 20-car field here today. Bill? There was a split. There's another one racing in the second split. We are not going to see that one, but good luck to them as well. 40 drivers wanted to race here today. They got qualifying in early as a, it takes a long time to go around here, but now you hear the engine start to harmonize. It's time for us to go racing. Gather up the chickens, take cover behind the cows. The horses are out of the barn. And it is Mumalidis. Well, no, it's Mike Dam leading them down into the first corner. Yeah, he just managed to sneak inside of the north curve. And that uh, might be criti critical, actually, because we said there is the fuel saving to worry about. So he might not want to be up front too much here. Mumalidis in second. Robert Mason sitting in third. Kota Miwa and David Payton round out your top five. It's all going to be about staying in the draft right now as we don't think there's going to be a lot of racing until, <laughs> well, probably as they come out of Gallo Hill on the fourth lap down that long straight. 
Absolutely. And this is the first real long straight that they're going to hit during this race. It's basically flat out all the way from High Oaks down past Swedish Cross and into Ehrenberg. So here over Flute Plots, they're not going to get air. They're just going to be flat out through this corner. Now, it's pretty much single file through this double apex or Bill. I wouldn't advise anybody to really try and fight too hard, especially on lap one, because there's just not enough to gain. Little pass being made for second position. Robert Mason makes the move on Mumalides. I don't think Mumalides is all that disappointed to give up that spot so early. I was talking to Yionis before the, the race, and he was saying, uh, it's going to be very polite. After you, after you. No, you lead now. No, you lead now. Well, he's Mike Dam got, happy to do all the work right now. Well, he's got to be careful because Mumalides almost got into the back of Mason. And they're going a little bit side by side. So this is the problem when you try to do that fuel saving. You better have practiced those laps because they do what uh, you know any racer knows, but for audience that doesn't, lift and coast. So you lift a little bit before you brake early down the straight, coast into the corner, then brake. Well, that changes your braking spot and changes your pace into the corner. So you really got to be careful that you don't either overshoot the corner or do what Jonas did, which is almost run into somebody. Always a fan of drama. I'm pulling for Mike Dabb to keep going. The hamster out there leading by almost a second now. Maybe he listened to my opening and thought, maybe I can try this. Maybe I can run away. I don't think so. We'll see what happens. Yeah, I mean, he's definitely opened the floodgates so far. He's, he's pulled out to about a second gap, but you're not going to be able to get away from someone. These straights are so long, these cars so draft dependent. You're going to need to be almost two seconds away to really break the draft. Excuse me, I checked the schedule, see how many more races there are left before the season is over. And we run out of Mike Dam puns. He's out in front. We talked this about the front half of your, of your top ten. Let's talk about the back half. Sorry, Dove racing in sixth. Sorry, Andrew had, Barry behind her. Go ahead, Joe. Sarah had an impressive qualifying, I have to say. This is top split, and she was well up into the top 10. So since I last saw her, and maybe it's because it's a different car, but she seems to have really found something. Good to have her. It's an always a fan favorite. Seventh position, Andrew Barry. Eric Crenshaw, a name I'm not familiar with, back in eighth. The Sheriff is in ninth, Jordy Fike. A little bit of a gap back to Derek Holland, running at your top 10. Mumulitis might be feeling a little bit under pressure here to catch up to Dam because he's been fighting back and forth with Mason now, and they've actually lost it up to two seconds. But again, Mike Dam is going to have to save fuel without any sort of draft helping him. So this will be a, a fascinating development as, as this lap progresses to see if Mumulitis pushes hard to catch him or if he just stays back with the group. Yeah, I think Mumalides didn't mind if he was going to be in second position, but I th he expected to be in second position right behind the leader. Right now, he might as well be leading as he's getting no help from Dam as far as fuel saving. Well, and he did give a, li a little bit of a shove from Mason, so I think Mason also wants to try and run down Dam. And just to tell you how powerful that draft is, even though he was at that cusp of two seconds, look at that. It is 1.3, seven tenths on that straightaway, Bill. Now they head down into my favorite corner on the racetrack. It's the carousel. Trickier big, than you might think. Yeah, the big danger is if you take too much speed in, you can pop out and go up onto the flat. And it's actually embarrassingly easy to send the car into the Armco if you pop onto the flat. So you got to be a little bit cautious. If anything, I'd set up for good run off of it because of the steep uphill you've got. Uh, just carrying that speed is a, a much bigger help. Right on board with Robert Mason, looking back at Miwa. This is uh, just behind Mumulidis, who's starting to leave Mason a little bit behind. This is a portion where there's just not a lot of long straights. After you, you get up uh, Kesselchen and, and up past that, it's basically a lot of weaving corners all the way until you get to the Dottinger Hoa. Look at Miwa. 
Now they head down into, I'll give you the English translation, what I know as Little Well. Bruchen, I think, uh, is okay. Richard. Yep, yeah. Up in the ice curve here. That one should be easy. It's both the same in English and in German. It's yeah, ice curve. It. <laughs> and I tell you what, these guys are probably happy, well, drivers, I should say, uh, are happy that we got the conditions that we did, that it's late in the evening. This is very grippy conditions. Different compared to what I raced on during some of the VLN races a couple years ago where the car was all sorts of slippery in some of these corners. And it's just essentially flat, easily flat out through some places where it gets really sketchy if it's greasy out there. We talked about the train. You see him coming at you. Let's go back to 11 to highlight some of these drivers. David Cannon is about three tenths of a second behind uh, Holland, who races in tenth. Hikaru Hemi in twelfth. Zachary Sears still in the lead draft, back to thirteenth. A little bit of a gap. Back to Graham Sanders in fourteenth. And then back in fifteenth. Oh, I went too far. I have to try this one. I'll take a shot at it. Mark Lutunu. Let or no, I think. Right. I think. I'm not sure. Don't quote me. Letterno, we're hearing. Anyways, uh, looking at the oh. racing that's going on, now that they're on the dot in Urhoa, uh, I'm actually curious to see if any of the back drivers are going to get feisty. Because even though, yeah, you want to save fuel bill, uh, obviously you can't win the race if you're all right. the way back in 18th. So you got to start using this draft to climb your way upwards. And they'll only get to do this this straight three more times. I mean, this there's only four laps, so we ride on board with sorry. Everybody pretty much staying in line, though. Big lift from Sara Dove. So not really interested. Granted, the, the road's kind of blocked. It is very narrow on this track. So a, a lot of times, if it's getting too wide in front of you, you really don't want to try and stick it three wide because that's almost a death wish. And someone's going to break early. Who's that going in? That's uh, Mason. Okay, Robert Mason. This is the early peel, late reveal. He's going to come in, get that stop made. He doesn't think he can go the distance. Come in for a little splash and then race as hard as he can. Yeah, I mean, not not always the worst strategy. If you don't feel confident in your fuel saving abilities, just get it over with early. Put yourself in clear track so that you can race without having to worry about anybody else around you. Because this is kind of one of those courses where they always talk about race the track, not other people. Definitely race the track here. We'll go back to 11th position. This is Hemi. up at Derek Holland, a veteran of this car. Coming out of High Oaks once again. Let's listen to see if he lifts it all. That's looking like he's lifting a little bit. Now granted, of course, he wouldn't really want to take it too wide through here. If he stays behind him after this, that'll be very, very telling. going to stick it in. Now they're coming up to the Swedish cross and this is another very sketchy corner I would advise taking it single file. Holland knows that. You can see he just slips back into line. He'd rather not sacrifice the race for this one hero moment. Zachary Sears in 12th watching on. Uh, Sears, I, honestly, get it at the best of this group because he obviously isn't interested in passing at all, so he's saving the most fuel of these three. All right, now you're back in this second train here. We'll come back to Sara Dove. These guys are nose to tail from, from third back. Payton, Miwa, Dove, Barry, Crenshaw, all involved in this train. Back to Cannon, maybe. Jordy Fike in the mix, too. Up front, Mumalidis. Started to pull away from these guys, and damn, still well out in front, saving no fuel. Mumalidis is keeping him uh, at least on a leash right now. He's about 1.1 seconds back. He's not getting much closer, which is kind of weird. I would have thought that the draft would 
get them right up underneath the bumper of the number one car. But uh, again, I'm not in there. Maybe he's also saving fuel. Maybe Mugulidis is doing what Dam is not. Boy, I'll tell you right now, if you're the leader, if you think this race is going to be locked up, stay with us until the very end. I think we're going to see a, many a driver sputter across the line. And we got an incident, I think. Can we look at Eric Crenshaw? He was racing in seventh. He just banged it in the wall really hard right next to John Cannon. Yeah, he was trying to make a move into Defense Valley. And I think we got the replay. I mean, you can make it a passing spot, but it's really tough to break into there in the first place. You're gonna see, we're coming through the Spiegel curve here, and then you've got Miss Hit Miss. Another one of those corners that's a little less scary in these grippy conditions. And he's gonna try to go what's the outside of the kink, but the inside of the hairpin, and then it just all falls apart because as soon as he hits the grass, the barrier is right up against the edge and there's no saving it. Come back live. He's still out there racing. The car took a little bit of a scrape, but he's managing to keep a good pace. Yeah, but what this will do is in a straight line, he's most likely got some arrow damage and he's just going to be a sitting duck. Boy, I'll tell you right now, if we can go up front real quick, because we'll, well, we'll stay on this battle for a minute until it settles down. But this is not what I expected at all. There are the front cars are all spaced out. Yeah, I'm a little surprised at that too. Although Peyton is starting to reel Mumulidis in a little bit up on their way towards uh, uh, the top of the hill here into the carousel. Just and would have expected them to be closer than they are though. They're three or four car lanes apart. I guess they're saving. And, and Miwa's actually right in the toe of both of them. Uh, so he's sitting in a very good position. Oh, Mumulidis was really bad off of the carousel and he's gonna pay for it here. So he loses a position to Peyton now. 2.2 seconds up to down. You, you aim to shoot off the carousel right where the banking ends, but he was just a little bit before that, and I think he had to get off the power slightly. <laughs> He's not afraid to race close with Peyton, that's for sure. Right on board with the driver in second, the Canadian. Pair of Canadians in the top five. Dam also from the Great White North. A fascinating, you know, spread of, of representation because they've got Miwa in there, Mumulidis, who is uh, in the Diach, although he uh, originally hails from Greece. Peyton, as you mentioned, from Canada. Sorry, tells Dub, you, a UK driver, yeah. Yeah, that tells you how popular this track is. Usually, you know, you tend to get some locals that are uh, really into a circuit. Oh, and George Fike. George Fike is in the wall. We got a little help. Yeah, it was really not the fault. That it was it was a Hemi who helped him around, but Jordy, you see Jordy get loose in front of him, and what may have been going around before Hemi gets to him. The trees Just to get out of, out of the way. Out of Brunchen. It's always really tempting to do exactly what he did, which is stay on the power and let it get a little bit of that gravel, but unfortunately he lost control of the rear and that was the beginning of the end. That that corner just understeers horribly and especially if you're just off the apex. When you get it just right, it feels great, but you know when you've got it wrong. Let's come back to eighth position right now if we could. This is and, a little battle going on. Go ahead, And Jeff. Crenshaw had a problem. Crenshaw is towed. Oh, he was up on his lid. Yep. I think this was at Swallowtail. Yeah, let's go ahead and take a look at this one. Happened right in front of John Cannon. That's Cannon chasing him. This is pretty much uh, why I was saying you want to race the track and not the other cars around you. He was pushing way too hard. I think we've just about got the replay here. 
Here it is. Swallowtail is one that can actually swallow you up if you want to put it in humorous terms because this right-hander, you're breaking and turning at the same time but at a huge rate of knots. And then this is pretty fast as well, this left-hander over the crest. And by the time you realize that you're going too fast, a lot of times you have what the, the Georgian here found out, that you're, you're just into it too hot and there's no saving it. Oh, and Peyton's pitting. All right. So what we thought would be a fuel run, David says I cannot get there. I think we're going to be seeing this 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 sort of drop off, a mix of the attrition. Whoa, and a lot of people <laughs> joining him. Uh, a mix of attrition of drivers who make mistakes and fall by the wayside, and others who realize I can't get to the end. I I've just got a pit. Robert. Robert Mason made his stop earlier, but he's not going to get there. I don't believe the leader of all the cars that have pitted is going to be David Payton as he comes out. In fact, Mason's behind Hemi even. Yeah. So despite being up within the top three, top four, Mason is not looking too good. Payton about 25 seconds behind Mike Dam. And, and Dam is running an incredible pace. 806, 804 for his two laps that he's put in. That that is just stonking pace. Yeah, that's telling me that he's gonna that he's he's not gonna no stop this one. He is looking to to uh, make a stop. Wonder if that means we'll see pretty much everybody have to make a stop to get this one to the end. Well, let's go back and look at fourth place. Here's Sara Dove sitting behind Miwa saving fuel. Miwa, or uh, Dove not doing too bad a laps either. An 805, the last one. And a second off the leader, it would be a lot at a normal track, but a second off the leader here says that you're actually pretty close on pace. Remember, 13 miles. So with that said, perhaps some of our attention should go back to the guys that are back here. Well, we don't really need to go back too far because we know that Hayden has already made a stop and he's come out in eighth. So nobody back in ninth or tenth is going to be, even if they no stop, it doesn't matter. They're already behind a guy who can go the distance. And the, uh, the gap right now from Peyton to the leader is about 25, nearly 26 seconds. Yeah. Keep an eye on that, see if it goes up. Names to watch out for that maybe can no stop it. Miwa, Dove, Cannon has a shot at it. Barry, perhaps. Jordy Fike is in the pits getting repairs. He'll be in there for a long time after the. Yeah, he actually the just ball. came out. Oh, but he's going to stop it. It's not repaired enough. He's done for the day. Well, that's disappointing. I was always really my goal, Bill, when I ran the VLN series in this car is uh, I wanted to at least get to the checkered flag. I didn't want to bin the car. Well, I can't begin to tell you how confident our driver in second place, the, the Greek streak, Jonas Mumilidis, was about this being a fuel conserving race that he was not going to stop. And so I can't help but think that he's still, that strategy still is in play. He's just letting Dam run away. I don't, I, 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 it's really hard to tell right now because so many have pitted. I just, I imagine that the, that some of the drivers are already aware that they can't make it and are going to be pitting this next right. lap. We just haven't seen them come in. I mean, the nice thing about it being only four laps is it's really easy to tell if you're going to make it or not. <laughs> I went through this week and looked at the previous winners. I did not see a winner. I checked about three or four races, a winner that actually made a pit stop. So we'll see how it plays out. This is a nice battle here between uh, John Cannon and Andrew Berry. 
I'm seeing about 20 seconds cone to cone. So that, uh, that 27 is going to be awful close where Peyton is sitting right now on dam. The pace that he's keeping should get him right. near there, but I don't know if it'll get him past him. Well, I got to figure with the gap that dam has opened up, he's going to be able to make a stop and, and get in and well, that's, out. That's what I'm saying. Is yeah. It, it's yeah. about 20 seconds from cone to cone. You t also add in how long they were stationary taking fuel. Right. Okay, let's go to, uh, let's go to, let's go up to third real quick because things are getting interesting here. Mumalides continues to back up. And I really think it's a case of him backing up to Miwa and Dove. Yeah, but if that was the case, he would have let them by, I would think, so that he could get behind them. And he hasn't done that yet. Maybe he'll do it on the straight. Yeah. <laughs> it might be a case of maybe Kodo doesn't want it. <laughs> that too. <laughs> well, I, I guess, you know, the more I think about it, Mumalidis doesn't, if they're slower than he is, he doesn't want them ahead here in these parts of the track. He's going to wait till they get to a long straight, then let them by and fall in behind them and save them and then go by before they get to the twisty bits again so that That's, he can lead the pace. That makes sense because he's not going to save a lot of time. I'm not going to save a lot of fuel being exactly. behind him through the technical section. Okay. He's just going to lose time essentially. Right. Sara Dove drops off a bit from those two. 5.7 seconds ahead is Mike the Hamster Dam. The Canadian driver sitting second in the points. Sonny Kanchen is not here today, but we saw that Kanchen has plenty of drop insurance in his pocket. Did Sonny say why he was missing this week? Is he just not a fan of the ring? I don't know. I don't think there were a lot of tears shed that Kanchen and Robert <laughs> Hartley were not here today. <laughs> Uh, and there's Mumalita. Oh, I thought Mumalita is trying to get out of the way right now. He's got a little bit longer to go. This is up through Gallows Hill. That brings us now on to the Dari Nerhoa. Okay, so this is lap number three. Let me get this straight. If Dam is going to pit, he's got he to do it now. Pit now, right? Okay. Yep. It's now or never. If if you go past that pit entry, you are committed to a no-stopper. And Mumulidis did let Miwa go by. In fact, maybe a little bit too fast because he's losing touch with Miwa. All right. Going past Antonius Beach. And up towards Tiergarten. It's at Hohen Ron, where you can come on into the pits. So we're going to find out in just a few seconds. If he does do a no-stopper, nope. I was going to say, if he does do a no-stopper, I will be mighty impressed, and he needs to give a call to uh, Scott Dixon. <laughs> All right, so now that with Dam coming in, the next question is, what will Mumalutis do? Mumalutis stays out. So does Dove. Miwa pits. Andrew Barry is out. Cannon is in. So is Sears. Dam comes out. And I believe he's going to be the leader of all the cars that pitted. Yeah, he comes out in front of Miwa easily. Miwa spins it out of the pits. Oh. Not sure he's going to lose a position, though. I think he's going to. He's on the grass right now. Coming up on him is David Payton. Here comes Peyton alongside. I think Peyton will have the momentum and he gets him. So Mumalidis but, is, it looks like about, actually only six seconds up the road. Is that right? I'm going to get my timing and scoring to give me a gap uh, here. Well, Barry stayed out as well. So Barry... We look here at this is Mumalidis with Sara Duff following him. And Bill. Dam is six seconds back, yes. I'm not sure if I should mention this or not, 
because I don't know if it's like a no hitter, but you always say we've never seen a woman win a race here on GSRC. Yeah, this might the, be one of our best chances. She is in the best position right now. If I would say the two drivers who saved more fuel, I would say Sara had saved more. Mumalidis was doing a lot of work out there. Now remember, Mumalidis, he still has half a lap to go, which is basically, uh, that's a long way here. And uh, you, you know what? Dam is coming. He's already right. passed Barry. So he is hustling right now. And he's, oof, I'm not so certain that Mumalidis and Dove have this. Whoa! And Mumalidis uh, somehow keeps it together. Aldenauer Forest usually doesn't, uh, it's not that kind typically to anybody who puts wheels into the grass. I'm amazed that he didn't lose it into the Armco. I'm showing Mike Dam. A tick under four seconds behind our leaders. Yep. He should be able to even see them around certain corners. Let's watch from on board. Doesn't see him yet. Look up right under our graphic. There's a, there they are, right up there. Oh, it's so far to go. Yeah, but as soon as you see the driver ahead, that just most it, it's a psychological thing most drivers are urged on even more they'll they'll push even harder now that can be bad if you push too hard i don't know about damn though he's been looking pretty good most of this race but even if he catches them as long as mumalides and dove have enough fuel where they can play full throttle at the very end of the lap it doesn't mean damn's gonna win this thing it just means he has a chance at it that's if they've got enough yeah. fuel to go full, full throttle, though. They're being caught very quickly, so I don't know really if they are. And you can see how much Mubilidis is trying to stretch the fuel because they're up through X Mule, again, coasting the car through the corner. Just went all the way off the track. Two and a half seconds from Dove back to Dam. Honestly, about their best hope is almost to, if they are having to save still, is to let damn by let and then stay fuel yeah. behind. Yeah. Yeah. Get that last little bit so that you can push. Damn in third has left Barry behind. Andrew Barry in fourth. Another no stopper. The only other no stopper. That's it. Tells you how tough it was to try and stretch the fuel on this one. And Dove's been hanging out behind Mumulidis for a long time. Yes. So Dove might be the one best position to push Mike Dam, but does she have the raw pace to fight with him? Well, I think she does based on her qualifying time. I think she's she's a legitimate threat to win this thing. She's quick. And it's all gonna come down to a chess match on that on the This uh, is true, yeah. Donington uh, Donington Hole, I mean it's it's I yeah, mean, put position. me in that position, I'd have a chance to win. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I play your cards right, absolutely. There's, It's very difficult to try and repass mm -hmm. someone through Tiergarten and Hohenron. So all she has to do is play defensive if she can just get herself in front by the time they hit the last few curves. Looking at uh, Peyton, second of the cars who have pitted. He's got himself up to fifth, but he's got 13 seconds to get up to Barry. So that's a long ways to go here in just a half a lap to catch him. Yeah. Unless, unless, unless Barry has a fuel issues. Sorry, to lose us a little bit of touch now with Mumilidis. This was on the run up the hill. I didn't see anything drastic. Maybe Mumilidis now feels confident enough that he's starting to push himself and he's starting to leave Sara behind. It is during the through the technical section where the draft probably plays less of a factor for Dove. Again, do not want to downplay her qualifying time, but she is quick. Absolutely. But the thing is, the closer you get to the end of the lap, the more you can be sure that you can get to the end. So could have been that they were both just kind of saving and coasting a little bit 
until they were far enough in the lap to really look at the numbers and say, okay, this is good. Well, I'll tell you right now, they are they are getting close to that last, that uh, Donington Hoa back there, that long straight, and Dam's not going to get there unless he has a miraculous drive. I'll give you an easy one, Bill. Dottiner Hoa. Hoa. There you go. Thank you. It, Donington Hoa. <laughs> Probably my a little favorite. Nas so little NASCAR coming into play. It's going to be a two-car race. They go through the little carousel coming up now, this left-hander. Oh, and Dam made a big mistake. He's five seconds back. I don't know if you mentioned that yet, yep. Bill. He's done. He's got third lock, 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 locked up. He's five and a half seconds ahead of Barry. It's a two-car battle now. Sara has to be careful not to make this pass too early or Mumalidis will come back on her. Here she goes. Oh, I don't know about this. Mumalidis ducks back in. She's going to have to play either some real good defense or lift now, let him back through, and then get him one more time. Remember, they could sputter to the end. We do not know if they have enough fuel to race full throttle all the way. She, you would think Mumalitas would start to make the move now. It's oh, not happening. I, I don't think he's got enough. I think she saved he's more losing. than he did. I think she has snuckered him. Mumalitas is out of fuel. If Sara Dove can just negotiate these final corners, we're going to get our first win for Sara Dove. Let's stay on her. Got to be smooth through these last few corners. This is critical. It's now not about pace. It's about petrol. The right-hander. And Sara Dove wins. Round number seven of the Advanced Mazda Cup from the ring. And just behind them, Dam was three tenths behind Mumulides at the line. He was so close to catching Iwanis. Oh my God, Bill. Bill, it's it's history on the channel. It's we've been doing it for five and a half years, and we Six finally now. had it. Six, a long overdue. We get our first female winner. Congratulations to Sara Dub, a well-deserved win. Stick around because she is certain to come in for an interview. Everybody else coming across the line right now as they finish. We have 13 cars finishing up. We're going to take a short break. Don't go far. We'll come back to run down the entire finishing order, starting with Sarah Dove. Talk to some of the drivers, which will include Sarah Dove, before we put a lock on the gate. Don't go far.
Streaming cyberspace into your place via the iRacing Esports Network. This is the Global Sim Racing Channel's coverage of the Advanced Mazda Cup Straight the Field event round number seven from the Nürburgring. Let's go to the standings right now. Sara Dove gets the win. She qualified fifth, but she was fast and she played the fuel strategy perfectly. Sputters across the line to get her first broadcast win and our first win from a female here on GSRC. Outstanding. Jonas Mumelidis comes home in second as he barely has enough to beat Mike Dam, who made the stop, was fast all the way. He has to set up for that final podium spot. Andrew Berry and Robert Mason round out the bottom half of your top five. David Payton, Koto Miwa, Hirakusui Hemi in eighth position, Zachary Sears, and John Cannon is in tenth. Joe? Derek Holland comes home 11th with Mark uh, Letourneau in 12th, with the last car on the lead lap being Michael Furchak. Rui Combra did take the checkered flag, but he was a lap down, only completed three today in 14th. Jeremy Hobson in 15th, and then Graham Sanders only got two laps in P16. From there, you start to get to the DNFs. George, Jordy Fike, 17th. Eric Crenshaw, 18th. Gareth Brocklesby in 19th. And Garrett Griffin, 20th of our 20-car field. Bill? Before we go to interviews, I want to tell you right now that we get to do this favorite section of our broadcast it's queen of the ball what it takes to be queen of the ball is undefinable but we know it when we see it this one was slapping us in the face who else could be queen of the ball than sara dove as she picks up the win here at the ring let's go ahead and bring in our queen of the ball now sara i know you are humble by nature but come on girl this was a proud moment for you uh yeah um i I didn't really expect to win. Um, it's a pretty good race. Hey, let's talk about let's let's forget the win for a second. Let's go to qualifying. You were fast. You had a nice qualifying time. You must uh, you practice this place, huh? Um, d um, the the I did the race for this and. Um, finished um third because i i was the third person to not pit so that's just how it came out um but before that race i had done no practice i uh i just decided to jump in because this is my favorite track and i've driven it loads and loads and loads so i thought it would be a good um a good comeback <laughs> And it turned out to be a good one. So. Let's take you to the past that won the race for you. Joe and I were a little bit worried that you did it a little too soon, that maybe uh, Mumelidis was going to come back on you, but he ran out of fuel. He had nothing for you. I, yeah, I was, I was, I was a little bit worried about that. I thought that I had more fuel than him. So I was kind of, kind of hoping that I'd be able to pass. And then he just wouldn't have that little bit left because I started sputtering into the, just at the pit entry. So it was almost close for um, both of us running out. Congratulations on the win. We've been watching the race a long time on GSRC. Great to have you show up. First time here in the Advanced Monster Cup and you get a win. Come back, do it again. Uh, I might, it's, it's, it's quite a late time for me, but I'll, I'll see what I can do. It certainly is. As she raised that. What time, Sarah, before we let you go, what time is it local time where you are right now? It's got to be what about two in the morning, something like that. It is five minutes past four. Oh my goodness. Go, <laughs> go to sleep or, or get up. I don't know what's on. Start your Saturday. Congratulations on the win. Thank you. Sara Dove, our winner today. Joe, who you got? I've got Mumulidis, who barely took second place. Uh, had to sputter across the line. Uh, first thing I, I have to ask is, at any point in the race, did you kind of realize that, that Sara was waiting behind you for a long, long time? And did that give you concern? I wasn't concerned about Sarah. What I was concerned about was uh, in lap two. I was concerned about Mike because uh, he just sped up. Uh, I did the same, and uh, that was a big mistake. 
Uh, yeah, that's true. That could have cost you a little bit of fuel there. Oh, it uh, cost me uh, a lot of fuel. Yeah, clearly. Uh, I mean, what are some of the corners that really you found are, are good for saving fuel around here? Is it just a general kind of thing across the course, or is there any section that's easiest to try and get a little bit uh, in the tank? Well, for me, unfortunately, I've practiced being uh, being a follower in fuel saving um, with my team. Uh, we're preparing for the Nürburgring 24, and it's going to be the same during that event. And, uh, well, I prepared to be uh, drafting with someone in front of me. Uh, I was um, I was putting my hopes up that um, either Elmar, Sonny, or Robert were going to run this race. And I was so completely unprepared to be the leader of the draft. And, uh, well, in the start, um, it just was confusing it was uh, uh it didn't I wasn't really prepared but um to your question there aren't a lot of corners unfortunately that i know of which you can fuel save a lot but just the braking zones instead of uh, of driving far ahead um and braking you coast a while to get your speed down it usually keeps you still on the draft uh, and uh preserves quite a bit of fuel but i think the the main points in which uh, fuel can be preserved uh, as a follower is on the straights where you can follow the person up ahead with 70 percent uh, throttle input which uh, saves quite a bit of fuel well regardless it was a second place uh, on a day that some of your main rivals didn't show up is that any consolation uh it is because uh that was sony's last drop week uh, Sonny's out now. If he does one more mistake, he will be out of the uh, championship contention and uh, I'll take over. Uh, I won um, against Mike. Mike is a little bit ahead of me, but uh, I think I can take that. Uh, uh, I can tackle that and get it uh, done until the end of the season. So again, if Sonny loses and uh, Mike stays behind me, I'll take the lead of the championship and the championship itself com comfortably. I like that confidence. That's the uh, Ioannis Mumulidis, who finished second today, Bill. And I believe you've got uh, one more to talk to before we're done. I get to talk to Mike the Hamster Dam, who tried to be the rabbit today, not the hamster. Mike, I thought you might do it. Uh, good pace. You, the, the plan was always to make a pit stop, my guess was, right? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I got to slow down on that. I was that was dumb. I I would have had the draft coming into the last straight. I felt like I could have had that, uh, but um, yeah, I don't I don't know how much you guys were aware of uh, the fuel strategy here going in. Oh no, we we were on it, and we we figured that. Uh, although I talked to lots of drivers, they said it was impossible to be fast enough, make a stop, and beat the guys who stayed out, but. I thought you were doing it. You were definitely running them down. You pick up the slowdown penalty after the pit stop is what you're saying. Yeah, uh, almost at the end of the last lap, I was within uh, 2.5 seconds of uh, first place. Um, you need about 1.8 to 2 seconds to get that draft. Um, yeah, I, I got a slowdown penalty that, that ruined my race. But uh, yeah, I, I did the race before this one, and I I just couldn't believe it. Like you got to save like five to six seconds a lap to make it. And like, it was just the boringest thing I'd ever done. Just <laughs> sitting there behind people doing nothing. I'm like, I came here to race, so I'm going to race. So that's that was my mentality. I saw the lineup tonight and I was like, um, I, I felt like I could do it. So I just put the pedal in the metal, try to make that gap, try to force, you know, the guys behind me to keep the throttle on. And I felt like it almost, I could have worked, but it just uh, didn't uh, quite. I think it's interesting because I think your pace made Mumalutus race a little harder than he expected to. And I think it cost him running out of fuel. You almost got him uh, yeah. at the line. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That was that was my plan to shake it up a bit. I mean, this is racing. We're not, yeah. um, we're not playing a sit in line. A great run indeed. Congratulations, Mike, on the making a good show and a podium, and you'll move up in the points. Congratulations. Good job. Absolutely. Thanks, guys. All right. There you have it. We talked to all the podium finisher. Joe, this was a fun one. Uh, strategy. Yeah, and I was kind of worried about the same thing as Mike, that it might be a boring race, but I think the fact that he decided to go contrary to everybody is what made it so exciting because – 
the thing that makes strategy at least interesting to me to watch on racing is when people do different things and that's what we that's what we got that's that's different options breeds intrigue and intrigue breeds entertainment that's what we talked about in the opening gsrc would like to thank everybody in the advanced monster cup community especially jordy fike for supporting this broadcast on the screen now are just some of the equipment and software we use to stream cyberspace into your place. Additional thanks to June Lalonde, who provides the iconic music. See the screen to how to get a hold of more of her great work. The Advanced Monster Cup returns in one week. That's going to be round eight. A 25-minute affair from Donington GSRC via IESN will be there to bring you all the action. You want a little more of the Newburgh ring? Well, stay tuned because next up on IESN will be... SimSpeed's coverage of the majors, the international region, round five from right here at the ring. That goes live, I think, that's in just a few hours, Saturday, April 27th at 3.45 Eastern, I believe, unless I have the day wrong, but I think that's coming up right now, if I know that, if I've looked at that right. Sliding across the screen are some of the upcoming broadcasts here on GSRC, so check those out and mark them down on your calendar. If you'd like more information about GSRC, Go to GlobalSimRacingChannel.com, Twitter at GSR Channel, Facebook at Global Sim Racing Channel, and Instagram at GSRC underscore Gram. If you haven't done so yet, become a YouTube subscriber by heading over to our YouTube page and hitting that big red button. Finally, on behalf of the entire crew, Joe, Sean, and Dougie, I'd like to thank all of you for watching as Saradov gets the win here, round number seven at the ring. With that said, we'd like to... Have fun storming the castle. So until next time, race clean, race hard, and we'll see you on the track.